Convincing writing is tight. This is lesson 29 in the Architecture of Grammar. My name is Leon Lavouche. I'm the author of the Architecture of Grammar and founder of Trivium Writing. And in this video, we're going to talk about what makes writing convincing. And if you're not sure what I mean when I say writing is tight, what this means is that writing is clean, writing is uncluttered. I often think of writing as kind of like a rope and so we want things to be tight we don't want it to be loose and let me illustrate what i mean by that in just a second but before we're going to talk about the five most important aspects of writing and what makes it tight or what makes it convincing in lesson 29 of the architecture of grammar you'll find more um, elements but these are the most important ones that we're going to address in this video First one is positive statement. Second one is unnecessary words. Third is related words. Fourth is signpost. And fifth is five, uh, same person. So let me illustrate what I mean. Now you'll remember we've been using the who and the what throughout this entire video series. So let's bring those back. So we've got our who and, a, and a what, and we could have potentially all these other blocks of information in our sentence. Now, what you need to understand when I say that convincing writing is tight is you need to make sure that this is uncluttered, that you only have what needs to be there. And so the first thing when it comes to positive statements, you could say, you can say, I don't like coffee. That's a negative statement because you have the not. I don't like coffee. I do not like coffee. It's better to say I hate coffee because then we don't have this. We don't clutter our sentence with the negative. It's a lot more clear. It's a lot more impactful. It just works out better. So positive statements as much as you can. If you don't have uh, to use a negative statement, then don't use it. So that's for uh, the positive. Now, unnecessary words, you'll have a lot of those. Words like uh, that, words like just, words like so, really, very. You know, all these words are just fillers. They don't do anything. My challenge to you is put every word on trial for its life. Put every word on trial for its life. What I mean is if the word doesn't bring value to the sentence, if it doesn't drive the sentence forward, then it does not need to be in the sentence. You can just delete it. And we've talked about this before in this video series, but you have two very important types of words, parts of speech. You have nouns and you have verbs, right? So nouns tend to be the who, Verbs tends to be the, well, verbs are always the what? It's the action. If you use very strong nouns and very strong verbs, then you don't need to use all kinds of useless words like adjectives, which modify nouns and adverbs that modify verbs. Let me give you an example. If I say I walk quickly, I can just say I run, or I can just say I sprint. So these are strong verbs. These are impactful word, verbs. If I say, um, you know, instead of saying the ridiculous politician, I could say the clown, the clown in politics. That's a lot more impactful. That's an impactful noun. So we want to make sure that you get rid of any unnecessary word. You have to ask yourself, well, does that word actually add value? Can I delete it? If I delete it, what happens? If not much happens, then just delete it. Related words. You want to keep <laughs> the related words together, it can be tempting to put things in the middle. For example, the example that I gave in the Architecture of Grammar is about Woodsworth and the fifth book of the excursion. And it says, um, in the fifth book of the excursion, Woodsworth gives a meta description of this church. Now that is correct because the 
related words are together, but what would be incorrect would be to say Woodsworth in the fifth book of the excursion gives a minute description of this church. So what we've done is we've effectively split the who and the what, and so the related words, they're not together. So that's not good. So we don't want to do that. Now, let's talk about signposts. Signposts are essentially connecting words that gives us an idea of where we are going. For example, a signpost would be uh, first, or it could be let's discuss let's discuss X, Y, or Z. These are signposts. A signpost is essentially taking your reader by the hand and telling them where we are going. Signposts can be really effective because they make your writing clearer, they make it um, easier to understand, but if you use too much of them, too many of them, then it's going to make your writing really heavy and that's not good. It's going to undermine the quality of your writing. It's not going to sound as convincing. So you want to make sure that you use them when it's appropriate, but that you don't let them take over your writing. Now, same person. We're talking about the verb tense. The verb tense goes in the what? It's the verb. So the action that is being done in the sentence. We can use the present tense. We can use the past tense. We can use the future. We can use all these different verb tenses. And sometimes it's tempting to change the verb tense. And uh, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that because it confuses the reader. These are time indicators. So it is as if you were saying, well, it's going there and then there and then there. And so that's just not effective. So sometimes if you're writing in a certain way, you might use the present tense to talk about the things that are currently the case and then talk, tell a story and go in the past. But make sure that you do that only when actually necessary. Because otherwise, as I've said, it's going to be extremely confusing for the reader. So to recap, make sure you're using positive statements. Don't encumber your who and what with the not. Make sure you remove any net unnecessary word. Put every word on trial for its life. Make sure that they provide value in the sentence. Keep related words together. Don't separate your who and your what as much as possible. Use signposts um, appropriately, moderately. Don't let them take over your writing. And then keep your verbs in the same person as much as possible, unless it's necessary. So this was a lesson 29 in the architecture of grammar. Open your book, The Architecture of Grammar, and go and look for the examples. And there are more elements as well that we haven't discussed in this video. So you'll see examples, you'll have exercises that you can do. And so you'll get the best possible practice when it comes to making your writing convincing.